for being here today in another session of uh, the Indri Academy in our fifth masterclass. We have a very international class today. We have, uh, well, I want to welcome all the participants today from Chile, France, US, Ukraine, Mexico, Italy, Canada, Spain, Iran, Sweden, and Australia. Um, Indri Academy, uh, it's a new type of digital school that tries to meet the needs of our partners in the entrepreneurship and industrial world. And what we want is to accompany through training the digital transformation of our ecosystems. And for that, we have a catalog of software open source that are recognized for their performance in the international level. So it is for us a great uh, pleasure to have here with us today Hugo Talbot who is the coordinator of the SOFA consortium. Um, Hugo studied mechanical engineering and in 2010 obtained a diploma for the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany and in Salion in France. He defended his doctorate, his PhD in medical simulation at INRIA in 2014. And his work is focused on the real-time simulation of electrical activity of the human heart. Um, from 2014 and to the end of, of 2015, Hugo uh, working on the simulation of cryoablation and cardiac electrophysiology as a research engineer. And since 2016, he has been the coordinator of the open source SOFA project. Um, well, uh, Hugo's objectives, and he will tell you so too, uh, are to support uh, the research work and industrial projects based on SOFA, and also to promote and ensure uh, with the members of the consortium the definition of a technical roadmap uh, for SOFA. Uh, well, Hugo is presenting today the masterclass on SOFA, which is uh, an open source software platform for multiphysics simulation. It is a physics engine that makes possible to model physical systems and their evolution, uh, such as the mechanic and the formal solids involved in collision. SOFA uh, is the result of more than 10 years of work and includes a large number of models, solvers, and algorithms that's allowing the rapid development of new simulations. So thank you, Hugo, for accepting being here with us today. Uh, I give you the floor now and uh, to all the participants enjoy the masterclass. I remind you that uh, this masterclass will be simultaneously translated into Spanish, so you can choose the language uh, in the bottom of the tool and the chat will be uh, open for questions. So thank you. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you very much for, for the introduction, Ayat, for the, for the very kind introduction. It's also a very, very broad introduction. You, 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 you're going to spoil a bit uh, the first slide of the presentation, but it's uh, it's perfect. Uh, I'm going to share. So welcome everybody to this uh, first of our masterclass. I'm super pleased to be here and to have the opportunity, thanks to Inoya Chile and, and uh, Inoya Academy, to present you the framework we are actually working with and and, and developing every day, uh, which is called SOFA. So I'm going to I'm going to share share my screen. I'm going to actually share the whole screen here. You should be able to see now the first uh, the first slides of of the presentation. So it's actually for SOFA the first uh, opportunity that we have for uh, as a presentation to, 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 to present you, you know, the research activity, the industrial activity, and all the development that is actually going on around the open source platform that we are having so far. Um, as, as Nayat introduced, uh, SOFA is a, it's a physics engine, and I'm going to present actually this solution, this open source solution. The fact that it's actually open source is one of the main features of the, of the, of the project. And uh, we are gonna, I'm gonna present you the, the solution and trying to show you how with this simulation tool, you can actually easily collaborate, prototype simulation and even innovate and you know, go further, further from research, even up to, to create companies and, and create, uh, create products from that. So you have got, I think, most of the information here that Nayat already reported about me. I just wanted to, to, to write some stuff. Uh, it's useful to know when what people actually know and what, they do, what they, they do not know, actually. So in my part, I'm more a mechanic, mechanical engineer. Before coming to Inoya for, the, for, my, for my PhD, I, I already touched some computers, obviously, before. But I never really had to implement and code things myself. So that was a, a first experience as a, as a PhD. And then I carried on, carried on with, a, with a postdoc, uh, as Nayat said. 
And now I'm actually taking care of this open source framework, so a software open source and taking care mostly of the community. It means new people that are starting with SOFA, members that are actually using SOFA for, for years, helping pe people in, in, their, in their use of SOFA and in their developments. So that's, uh, that's what, uh, what we do. As I said, really in the first, uh, on the first slide, it's actually one of the first masterclass, uh, it's the first masterclass that we are doing. That's a format that we never did before. So I implement, I mean, I made the, all those uh, other slides specifically for, for the occasion. And actually for this presentation, I thought, okay, but what's actually a really ma masterclass? So I looked for the definition of masterclass uh, on, on, on Wikipedia. That's what I found. Uh, it's a class given to students of a yeah, particular discipline by an expert. It can be music, painting, drama, any, any kind of arts, uh, and so on. So hopefully the experience with SOFA and with simulation hopefully won't be too much of a drama. So if, if you need, of, or if it becomes you know, any, any kind of drama, please let us know. We are, we are always here to, to make SOFA the, the best experience uh, possible and to bring help and to bring support. Heart, uh, about Heart, yeah, there have been some projects about Heart uh, using SOFA and relying on the, on the open source framework SOFA. Uh, and I just present here two of them, uh, which was done back in 2015. For, uh, both were around robotics. The first one really soft robotics. It's uh, robots which are deformable and which you know, are, are moving and deforming according to some control laws. And so that was a first project and another one that was made about origami. Just to show you that, so, I mean, you know, science research is not always only math equations and so on, but can also apply to, to any kind of social activity like, uh, like arts. Uh, also, sometimes when things go actually a bit wrong, sometimes we have some, some bugs and so on. That's actually one of the images that has been uh, captured, so a screenshot that has been made by some researchers while developing simulation. The simulation was just exploding and that's one of the artistic pictures he took about, uh, about that. So let's have a look about the overview of this masterclass. So I do not speak much actually of, of Spanish, but I tried to, to make my, my four points here, um, actually three of them uh, in Spanish. So we are, we are going to see first what is numerical simulation and physics simulation, and what kind of physics simulation we can actually achieve with SOFA. Actually, how to get access, how to use, actually how to get SOFA and how to use it as a third point, and what kind of application we can actually target, uh, target with SOFA. So I'm gonna show you a bit uh, First, using SOFA, modifying some simulation scenarios, so play a bit with a, with a framework to show you how it, how it works really briefly. And all the idea of the, of the masterclass, actually that's the way I, I like to, 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 to get it. It's to be as interactive as possible. So if you have some questions, there will be also people reporting me the questions on the, on the chat. So never hesitate to post some questions, ask about, you know, who did actually this work? That was a collaboration with who and who, or how does this code work, whatever. So never hesitate to intervene in the chat, or you can, I think, even take the mic if you'd like to, at the end of the pre presentation, for instance, ask some, co some questions. So really feel free to, to ask uh, anything, uh, anytime. So um, that's gonna be the program for this next hour, for this, uh, for this masterclass, and we'll start with what is actually numerical simulation. So what is numerical simulation? And we can also say physics simulation. Physics simulation is actually a computation that we are doing based on mathematical models and algorithms that will reproduce numerically, virtually, the physics which is around us. So it's, it can be any kind of you know, things happening around us. So it could be a flow of air, it could be how something is actually deforming. So when you are applying a force on a soccer ball, how it deforms. In our case, we like to focus to, uh, a lot actually in the community about medical application. And uh, we are looking for instance, how an organ is actually deforming or behaving 
how, it, how it's actually working on a physical standpoint. And how does it work, a physics simulation? A physics simulation, it works mostly on two principles. The first one is that, I mean, globally it comes from the fact that we cannot compute any kind of geometry, any kind of object, any kind of physics easily. So what do we do? We say that we discretize in time. So we cut the time in small pieces. That's what we call discretization. We discretization, we are discretizing in time, and that's what we call small time steps. And we are also not cutting the time, but cutting the space. Instead of making the computation, all the calculus, all the computation over the whole volume of an object, we are making the computation on small parts of volume, some sub volumes somehow. That's what we call discretization of space. For that, in SOFA, you'll see that we use a lot a method which is called the finite element method. Why actually creating a project for simulation? I wanted to tell you a bit about the history of the project. It's actually a, 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 a history which is coming back up to 2006 at INRIA, where three teams, actually, there was three research teams working together, and they had a need of having a common tool, a common software for physics simulation. That's some of the faces of the, I would say, historical developers of SOFA. And their ambition was actually to create a software that would, be, that would become the open source reference for interactive and real-time application. That's, what, uh, that's actually at this time that Sofas, Sofa, the Sofas uh, project started back in 2006. And this framework for simulation, they had a concept for that. They, they had some ideas when starting the development. They wanted the software to be super efficient for creating simulation. They wanted to be able to design a simulation easily and to be able to not only simulate one object, but to be able to simulate several objects with several different kinds of physics. They also wanted to have a software that was really modular. It means they wanted to have the possibility to have a core of code, so a base, a base of code, and also some optional features. That's what we call plugins. It's some optional codes that you can activate or deactivate. And third, they wanted the software to provide efficient simulations. As I said, the objective was actually to provide a simulation for uh, software, sorry, for interactive simulation. So to be interactive, you need actually to have a computation that is fast enough so that, for instance, you can take into account user interactions. That's how the SOFA story started back in 2006. And SOFA today, what is SOFA? It's indeed a physics engine. So as I said at the beginning, it's a software which implements mathematical models and algorithms to describe the physics around us. But mostly, we are targeting what? We are targeting soft and rigid body dynamics. It means modeling, simulating the mechanical behaviors of, of soft bodies and rigid bodies. For that, we are with these models and these algorithms, we are actually using them for very different purposes. For instance, medical simulation. That's what one example is here with the deployment of a, what is called a stent. It's actually a structure which is, which is allowing a blood vessel to, to stay open. It's also used, you know, all the models for, uh, of soft and rigid body dynamics are also used for robotics. That's what you can see here 
in the video here. Controlling robots, soft robots, with simulation. It can be used for augmented reality, virtual reality, animation like in video games, biology, and many other kind of topics. That's just, I would say, the main topics of application, the main field of application of SOFA. Mostly soft and rigid, rigid body dynamics. And there is some other kind of applications like heat transfer, fluid mechanics, but it's really minor, minor, uh, minor models that we have in SOFA. The, the last here image that you can see here on the bottom of the slides, it's application coupling between simulation and artificial intelligence so that we can better predict how a human organ is actually deforming. So that's what is so far, a physics engine. But how to get SOFA? As I said at the beginning about the history of SOFA, SOFA arose from the need of a collaborative tool, so a common, a common software between the different research teams for physics simulation. And they decided from the beginning, back in 2006, they decided that this code, this software, had to be open source. So they decided to define what is called a license, an open source license on the code. And they, they decided to, to choose the one which is called LGPL. LGPL stands for uh, GNU, uh, Lesser General Public License, version 2.1, okay. What does it mean? It means that you can freely download SOFA, you can freely use SOFA, you can freely modify SOFA, and you can even freely make product based on SOFA. That's actually how, and yeah, the, with this philosophy, that's actually what enabled to create among those, I think, among those last eight years, there have been uh, seven companies created. Soon there will be an uh, eighth company created. So, which is allowed, allowing both researchers to work and also to allow company and new companies to create, to be created around, around so far. So the code is open. What does it mean? It means that, again, the code is available, available online. It means that if you go on this web page here, git, github.com slash sofa, sofa framework slash sofa, you will find all the source code of the project with uh, some documentation, information, how to contribute, how to work with sofa and so on. So all the code is available online and you can you know, check, check the code out and, and, and download it uh, directly. So the code is online and there is two ways actually of down, downloading so far. First, you can download what is called binaries. So it means you download it, binaries, it will work immediately. It will work on both, you know, uh, Linux, Mac OS, and even Windows. I mean, th the three platforms are actually supported. Problem, you, the problem that you will have, I mean, the limitation that you will have with binaries is that binaries, you do not have access to the code or you cannot really edit the code. So it's good for starting with SOFA. You can just go here on the website of SOFA. I forgot to open the page here. Download here, sofaframework.org slash download. Here you will find a direct access to the binary version of SOFA you download, it works. Otherwise, you can also download the sources. There will be two steps additional. Here, first, you have to configure and what is called build, so compile, compile so far. And there is a whole documentation online about that. The big advantage by doing that is that you can access the code, you can edit the code, and it helps a lot in the understanding of the, of, the, of the project. And if, again, you look here on the code of SOFA, what are you gonna find? You're gonna find for the core 
of SOFA, a lot of C++ classes. The code of SOFA is using a language which is C++. So I guess some of you are actually already familiar with C++. It's one of the most uh, well-known language in, 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 in computer sciences. So C++. And how do we actually work every day with C++ and with, the, with all this C++ code? We, have, we are actually using this platform, online platform, GitHub, which is actually defining a whole process for contributing. It means updating the code, improving the code on an everyday basis. It allows when there is a change to allow other developers to have a look to those changes and to accept or ask for, 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 for some updates about these, uh, these contributions. So that's, that's really the place where everything happens is GitHub. So that's this online, online website where, that I just showed you here, the GitHub of SOFA. About the code, one last thing is that there is a new version of this core of SOFA. So the, really the base of SOFA, you, you're gonna have new versions, what we call release, new release every six months. The latest one is actually the one that has been released back in June. So it's the, the version, sorry, the version 20.06. Last about, you know, the, the, I would say, architecture point of view, it's how it is organized. As I said, we have a core, so a base of code, which is in C++, following the license that I, we, just, uh, we, we just looked at previously, which is the... Uh, lesser general public license, LGPL, and we have regular release, so regular versions of SOFA, which are provided every six months. But there is also the possibility to develop code based on SOFA, but that can be aside from SOFA. It's what we call the plugins. The plugins, they are those optional features around SOFA, developed by research teams, by companies, by independent developers. And when you are, as a developer, coding a plugin, you are free to define the license you want to use with that. So the code, the code that you are developing based on SOFA can be open source, but it can also be closed source or private. It can also be private, private code. You are the one to choose. All right, so maybe we can stop there before uh, seeing really how to use SOFA. It will be the next step. Before, going to, before seeing how to use SOFA, we can maybe first open SOFA and have a look to how it does look like when you download it. When you download SOFA, that's what you get. An interface, a user interface, with some buttons here and a view, a viewpoint here and some information here that we are that we're going to see right now. First, here you have a 3D view, 3D view of the scene of the simulation that you are going to compute. You have here some buttons here that will allow you to start the simulation, stop the simulation, or make a step by step simulation. You can change the view, save the view, and so on and so forth. And the third point here is actually this area here where you can see what is called the graph. That's the place where we define what is in the simulation, what is to be computed. And you have also some here a view, a view widget that will allow you to display different information. Where are the, you know, where, what, what is the geometry that we are using for the computation? What is the geometry that we use for visualization? This is the surface here and so on and so forth. You can also visualize like the meshes that are used for collision detection. That's what we see here. All right, we'll get back to here. We'll get back to that in a moment. So before really starting to play with SOFA, I'd like to show you a bit how to use SOFA 
and how to use SOFA for that, I'd like to give you three main principles of SOFA. Those three main principles, they will help you in better understanding the way SOFA is actually working. The first main principle is the one that we call the scene graph. A scene graph, so it's a graph indeed, that's what we could see in the graphic interface here. This graph is describing what is in the simulation. In every simulation graph, we're going to have what? We're going to have what is called a root node, so a starting node. This node here, this starting point of the, it's really the, the starting point of the simulation. And then you're going to find here sub nodes, so there will be one sub node per object. In that case, here we have two objects. One is the snake. The, the other one here is this rigid, what is called caduceus. So we have two objects, therefore we have two nodes here. So it's composed of nodes. Each node represents an object, an object in the simulation. And what is in those nodes? Here, you'll have what we call components. It's, actua it's actually C++ codes. It will be models and algorithms that will define what? That will define the, in this case, mechanical behavior of the snake, how the snake deforms, how it moves. We are defining some solvers here, and we are defining also like the mass of the snake and the mechanical low, so how the snake is deforming. So that's the main, really the main principle, the first main principle is that we describe always a simulation using what we call a graph. This graph, we'll see that it can be described using two scripting language, either XML or Python. It's two different languages that are actually used for scripting and for defining the simulation. For instance, here we had two objects, the snake and the caduceus. So we had two nodes, two parts, two objects. In this case, if we have only one object we are going to have one subnode called, for instance, lever. And this node will contain all the physics information, like the solvers and the physical law that we want to define for our model. But what happens if we want to create another object? As we saw in the case of the snake, if we have two objects in the scene, we have two nodes representing each one object. This second object, for instance, a heart, we can define specific solvers and we can define a specific physics and specific models associated to the heart. That's how it works. So that's for a first principle. I wanted to show you another principle of SOFA which is just written here. In our simulation, we always have something which is called an animation loop. This guy, it's a bit specific to so far. The animation loop is doing what? It's actually a, a component which is ruling the steps of simulation. It will give orders. For instance, it will say, oh, guys, in this time step, so in this sub amount of time, we want to compute first collisions between the different objects of the simulation. And then we want to compute the physics and the animation loop will give those orders. And it's using this 
principle of what is called visitor, it would be the same word actually, I think in, in Spanish, visit, visitor. Uh, this visitor is actually propagating the, the different steps of simulation, when to compute the collision, when to compute the physics. And there is one last main principle about SOFA that I wanted to talk to you about. It's the mapping. In SOFA, we like to have the possibility to use different meshes, actually to use different representations for one single object. It means that if we want to, if we want to have you know, a mesh like this one, the blue mesh here, for the, this one can be used for the mechanics. But if we want to use another mesh for visualization, it's possible. The big advantage of doing that is that it will allow us to define where we want to be accurate, where to have uh, what we call precision uh, in, in, in French, but I think be uh, the same in, in, in Spanish. So where we want to be accurate and where we want to be fast, where we want the simulation to be really faster and a bit less accurate. That's what it allows to, what it allows to, to do. So we, have, we always have the possibility to use different models for the mechanics, the collisions, the collision model, and the visual model. That's the mapping. Why? Bec the mapping is actually the transformation. It will keep all those meshes current with, with, a, with another. We'll see that in a moment. Those three main principles, the idea of designing the simulation with a graph, as we saw just previously, the system of animation loop and mapping, it's always in the purpose of, of being efficient. I, this, this is actually the slide that I showed you earlier in the presentation. And I, I mentioned that, you know, the idea was to have in the concept to have a si simulation software that was efficient. So we wanted to have computation, computation that was done pretty fast. Those three main principles, they were developed for that purpose, to be efficient. Here, I wanted just before going further to show you some examples of what people actually do with SOFA here. On the left hand side, you have uh, a company, consulting company, which is working with SOFA and integrating SOFA into Unity or into Unreal Engine. So we are using SOFA for the physics and we are integrating SOFA in other softwares like the one which is called Unity 3D or Unreal Engine. Here in this case it's actually uh, Unreal Engine. On the right hand side it's actually the result of uh, a product of a company which is called Insimo and this company is developing training simulations for surgeons, so for medical applications. Those medical simulations, in this case, it's a simulation for neurosurgery, so for the brain. And they are using SOFA to mimic and to reproduce the physics of the brain and of the blood vessels. All right. I wanted to, you know, since again, the idea of, of masterclass is also to, I think, give a bit of uh, insights of how does it work, but also what kind of attention points there could be about making simulation, physics simulation. There is always, I would say, some points where we need to, to, to put a specific care onto. It's actually the, those three points, at least on my opinion. It's first one is actually the, the things that you are always giving as input to the simulation. Because that's what will define, for instance, the units. You know, if you are using meters, if you are using inches, or if you are using, you know, seconds for the time and so on. So this is something you need always to be very careful about when you are running a physics simulation. Another point is also 
what kind of numerical settings, what kind of numerical tools, for instance, the solvers you are using and how you are actually defining the settings of those, of those solvers. This is actually relying on what is called numerical analysis or also linear algebra. So behind, again, there is a lot of theory behind and always be careful when you are actually choosing the solver and defining the properties of the solvers. And again, if you, as I, as I mentioned before, SOFA is relying on a method which is called finite element method for, I, I don't know if you remember, for the discretization in space. So how to cut the space into sub, some small sub spaces. It's actually using the finite element method. Again, for that, if you wanna take a look at SOFA, it's always good to have a look also to uh, the, the theory behind, which is the theory of the finite element method. That's, I would say, some key points to, I would say, uh, draw, I mean, uh, yeah, keep a bit of attention on those, on those points and, and maybe have a look uh, to, to, the, to the theory which is behind. So, what you'll get when you are when you when you're going to download so far this is those built-in features you'll be able to run simulation you'll, you'll be able to define some physical models on it even compute some collisions we're going to see that in a, in a just a right after but we, we're going to see as well that you can have access to many different plugins some of them are actually open that's the one i put some of them here on the left some of them are actually private, so I put them on the uh, 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 the open source. Sorry, are on the on the left hand side. The private codes are on the right. But since Sofa is a community, there is always possibility to share the code, exchange knowledge, and and make collaboration with uh, with partners. Before going any further, I'd like to show you a bit so far, but really how to design a simulation with so far. So let's have a look at, for instance, I'm gonna load another simulation, another example. I'm gonna load one of the default example, which is in so far, the one which is called lever.scn. So SCN means scene, it's a simulation scenario. This simulation here includes only one object in that case and therefore there is only one node here, the node called lever. This node here again it includes C++ components which are here and those C++ components will allow us to define the physics, in this case, the mechanics, the mechanical behavior of the lever, of this object here. So if I click on animate, I'm gonna see here my lever slowly deforming. I can even hear there is some predefined interactions that can come with sofa. And I can even hear play, pull and, you know, uh, pull and push directly on the 3D model. So it's completely interactive here simulation. All right, what I wanted to show you is how to define such a simulation. As I said earlier, we are using some scripting language. One of them is XML, it's quite a, it's a basic scripting language. And that's one of the example here, it's the, it's the file which corresponds to this simulation scenario. We have the starting node here, which is called root. So I could just change the name here, root. And we have one sub node, this guy here, called lever. This is this guy here. Because we have just one object, we have one sub node. I can obviously here change the properties, like here, my mass density is one for my, for my object here. 
as you can see here, we are loading a 3D geometry here that we are using here for the, for the, for the mechanics. And I can change in the file, I can, I can directly change the property here of this mass component. So if I animate the simulation, you can see here, I, can, I, can, I, I will restart the simulation for you. I will animate again, run the simulation. You see the lever is falling slightly in which direction here? In the y minus y direction here in the bottom of the simulation. Let's increase this mass density. Let's put on, let's put 10 instead of one. So we will increase the mass density and let's reload the simulation. I will run it. And as you can see here, the lever is deforming way stronger since I defined a mass density, which is way higher. I should, I should have put a, maybe a, a smaller mass density like here, like here. Using the mass density of three, that's what you, sorry, of three here, you can see that my lever is deforming much more. Why? Because it's affecting by the gravity, which is acting on my 3D, on my 3D object. All right. I'll show you just for this uh, last part of this uh, ends on, on sofa, just how to add an object in this simulation scenario here. We're gonna add one, an, an, another object by, by doing what? By, do, by adding a new node, like we can actually name this node particle, for instance, and we'll close the node like that here. All right, if I save and I reload here, you can notice that we have now two nodes, one lever, one particle, but the particle is completely empty. So let's add one single particle and let's add really another object in the scene. So I'm gonna copy paste just to be a bit uh, faster here. There, there we are. And we are defining here, so a new object, a new mechanical object. We will consider that this object will be a rigid object. And I, I would like to place in space this object into this position, for instance. And with this orientation, this is, oh, sorry, this is my new object and maybe I want to define for instance a mass to, to this object so that it can fall onto the lever. So let's look at that. I'm gonna maybe just add one last thing. It will be some forces acting forces force acting on my particle. So let's add a force in the minus y direction as well. Up zero zero zero. There we are. Here, by doing that, I define here the solvers and the position of my rigid particle. If I, I'm gonna reload, I'm gonna save and reload this, uh, this, this simulation here, just I'm gonna show the object, show object here, and there we are. I'm gonna reload and there, when I reload the file, you can see that now we have a new particle that appeared. This is this second object. If I animate, I still have my liver deforming and my particle is going through here. Why? Because we define the mechanics, but what we need to add, if we want the two objects to collide, we need to add what is called a collision model. So I ju I'm just adding a collision model. I'm gonna reload the simulation and I'm gonna display the collision model. As you can notice here, we are actually using spheres for the collision of the lever and a sphere for the collision of the particle. If I run the simulation again, now you will see that the, part the particle is bouncing, so jumping on the lever. 
So this is a very short, you know, just a very short hands on on, on SOFA to show you what is possible with the built in features of SOFA. And again, that's just what is in SOFA. Around SOFA, you have many, many plugins. That's just a very short, 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 short list of the, uh, of the plugins existing. There is more than hundreds of plugins existing around SOFA. Some of them are for, you know, model order reduction. Use some other are for robotics. Some of them are using GPU computing for, that's the SOFA CUDA plugin. Integrating SOFA into Unity, Unreal Engine, Beam models, and so on. So many, many different plugins. If you have interest in one of them, never hesitate to get in touch with us. And some examples of what you can actually achieve with SOFA. Here are some examples. Some examples are from research. That's on the left hand side here. Some are industrial products. That's what you see on the right hand side. On the top left, you can see application of simulation for robotics. It's actually simulation plus artificial intelligence in order to automatically control a soft robot. It's a, a work done at Inoya. Below, it's a work done at CNRS, which is another uh, French research institute for needle insertion. So insertion of a needle, that's what you see here, into a human organ. In this, in this case, it's again a liver. So it's a, a robotic surgery. While here on the right hand side for the industrial application, you can see some COVID application where some of the companies in the SOFA community used physics simulation to design patient specific masks. While on the bottom right, you can see the integration of SOFA into Unity. So the rendering engine, Unity engine, and it is used again for medical simulation purposes. So that's really just a very short overview of what can be done with SOFA, what people do actually with SOFA. And I wanted to show you also who is actually working with SOFA. As Nayat said uh, for, for introduction of the, of the masterclass, SOFA has been developed for more than 10 years. Actually, now it's, it's been 14 years that SOFA has be, uh, is being developed. And we have now more than 1,000 of users, everyday users, more than uh, 100 uh, developers, again, everyday developers in companies, in research centers. And what we are really happy about is that in the community, there is not only research, not only industrial partners, but there is also independent developers. So developers working with SOFA on their own. And this builds a full international community. So as you can see from the map, Chile was still uh, one of the country where SOFA was just starting being used, not widely used, but starting being used. And that's really some, a trend which is growing and, gr and growing every, every year. Again, here you can see some of the partners. It's just a very short list of the, of the partners, but you, you should recognize some, some names like Stanford, Unity Florida, uh, CS Iro here in Australia, and so on and so forth. And what is nice with an, with an international community is that whatever is your institute, wherever is your institute, there is always a way of collaboration, a way of working together. For instance, here, it was the result of a work done in collaboration with MIT, where they actually used SOFA for grasping soft robot grasping, so how to catch an object using soft robotics and simulation. So that's the kind of very 
satisfying projects that we like to, to see happening in the, in the community. And since the community is actually growing and growing a bit every day, every month and every year, we starting to build what's called a consortium. That's actually where I'm working. A consortium dedicated to the community. That's the mission here of the consortium, maintaining the code, making sure that the code is always working, always robust, always clean. Coordinating the developments. It means making sure that there is not two, three different teams working on the same topic. Supporting, so it means helping the whole community and ensuring the growth of the ecosystem. What I mean is that the purpose and the, the missions of the consortium is to help anyone in the community to succeed in their use of SOFA. That's it, that's it. That's as simple as that. Helping everybody succeeding in their use of SOFA for simulation. That's here the partners that we're, I mean, working with, but more than working with, that's actually the partners that are funding SOFA here. In RIA first, we have uh, Korean partners, Kyung Puk University, Asan Medical Center, the German Fraunhofer, University of Florida, and soon some incoming partners, so not, not yet official partners, that, but that already uh, announced uh, their, their wish of supporting so far. Harvard first, uh, University of Brussels, Infinitech 3D, which is a consulting company, and Italian University from Verona and Napoli. So just to, to end the this uh, again for it's the very first masterclass uh, of sofa so um, i hope you, you you enjoyed it the take home messages that i wanted to to give you before answering all the questions so please do not again hesitate to post all the questions on the chat and and and, and even take the mic if you like uh, afterwards the first take home message is never hesitate to get involved it means start your own implementation of simulation implementation of models. And for that, you will always get the support of the community. You can get help from the forum. It's, a, a, it's online, it's free, it's open, and any, anyone can actually ask any question about SOFA. There is GitHub, as we saw previously, so it was the, the web page just here, GitHub, where you can actually report some issues, some problems. As soon as you have developer problems, you can make what is called bug report. And you can also obviously contribute to the code. Really what is important, I'm gonna show you right now on the website where it's actually located. You have a, docu a documentation which is available online. And this documentation will help you, you know, step by step understanding how is so far working and how are actually working the different kind of C++ component in SOFA. So never hesitate to take a look at this, at this open documentation. Second take home message is actually never hesitate to get in touch with anyone in the community and especially with the consortium. If you have any question, we are here to, I mean, to answer any kind of question. It can be for starting a project, finding a, I don't know, finding a PhD position, finding the right, if you are looking for PhDs or if you are looking for master students, you, we can also, you know, um, forward all the, all the job announcement. If you want to have access to, those, to the slides today, it's completely free. I think there will be video online as well. So everything is uh, open and free and never is day to contact us directly uh, email this is here my, my direct email if you wanna, if you wanna, if you are either shy or if you later on have some other additional questions never hesitate to get in touch how to actually meet us it's actually quite simple they will be quite soon in in less than two months there will be our annual conference which is called the sofa symposium or sofa week it will start on the 24th of November. It's free, it's open. Again, there will be scientific presentations, industrial presentations. So do not hesitate to join. It will be online again. So it will, we, would be, we would be pleased to have any one of, of you joining us uh, during the day. 
can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever uh, social media you'd like. We, we should be uh, almost uh, on any one of them. And it's now the time of the end of the presentation. And obviously, if there is any question, I would be extremely happy to answer any of them. I'd like just before, again, to thank uh, Inria Chile and Inria Academy for the opportunity of uh, making this uh, first SOFA Masterclass. Thank you very much for the attention. And if there is any question, please do not hesitate to take the mic, ask questions. And just for your information, what you see here below, it's uh, some simulation made with SOFA for ophthalmo ophthalmology procedure. So I could give you more details if you'd like. Um, thank you very much, Hugo, for your presentation about SOFA. We've got a couple of questions in the mm -hmm. chat. Mm -hmm. uh, Amir okay. yep. Bouchier, I think I said that correctly, he asked, uh, hello, Hugo, does the contact detection support internal contacts? like a needle entering a deformable object. Yeah, so indeed collision detection in SOFA does support two, uh, two, two different things that can be behind, um, uh, behind self-contacts or internal contacts. An object can, can be in collision with itself, so there can be auto-collision computed with SOFA. And second, to answer, I think it was more that question, uh, the, the one that was asked here, uh, in SOFA, you can also compute indeed internal collision, like it was actually in the in the in the diapositive where we could see needle insertion. I'm gonna try to find that again. It was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Sh what you can achieve with SOFA here on the bottom left uh, case, where you had actually a needle, and the needle is entering in the volume of the liver uh, of the liver model. So. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, perfect. Um, another question uh, from Sebastian Aranda. He asked, uh, hi Hugo, thank you very much for the presentation. Could SOFA be used for astronomical object simulations? <laughs> thank you Sebastian for the question. So um, as a physics engine, uh, SOFA can, can be used actually for simulating any kind of physics. As long as the associated physical model, like I don't know what kind of um, uh, model you'd like to, to see, if it's a attraction or repulsion model, yeah, definitely. So there is one in SOFA, it's a basic one. Uh, if you want to develop you know, an advanced attraction repulsion model for uh, astronomy, it could be feasible. It would rather depend on the, the kind of solver and the kind of model you are actually looking for and to see if, if, if it does already exist in SOFA, maybe or if it's easy or not to implement. And again, for that, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to help uh, anytime. Um, great. Uh, Amir Sayadi asks, uh, hi, Hugo. Thanks for the presentation. Is it possible to get real-time feedback using a binary file in batch or, gra or graphic user, user interface mode? Um, so to get you know, when, so the question is then, when, when you have different objects colliding, when they do collide, they will deform, but they will deform due to what? Due to contact forces. It's, and that's actually a, a part of the computation in SOFA. SOFA is computing the, the forces acting due to the collision. Those forces, you can actually retrieve them uh, in SOFA, especially if you have some haptic device and you want to feel uh, feel the force in your haptic device, you have a way to get access to, the, to this force information. And if you want to export that to, 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 some, uh, uh, to some binary files, there would be a bit of, a bit of, implement, uh, a bit of coding, but it would be definitely, uh, definitely feasible. Yes. Thank you. Get back um, to the last slide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Lamtower uh, asked, uh, hi, Hugo, great talk. If I understood correctly, there are only commercial integrations with Unreal Unity. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Is there any open source integration? Yeah, that's. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for the for the for the for the for the comment. It's actually a good point. We we know it's actually a current weakness of the of the of the approach. We do have indeed, as you understood, only commercial versions of uh, of uh, of. It's actually not really commercials. It's just like to have access to them. 
you need to talk to, a, to the company. And since, since ask, uh, asking, uh, asking for free license, because the license is free just it takes them a bit of time to you know take care of the license make people sign and so on they are charging some very and uh, some some hundreds of euro, of euros fees just for question of rentability but we're actually in discussion to get at least some i, I would say some basic version of of, um, of sofa into unity so that people people could start from this point uh, using sofa in unity that would be free so it's something which is in discussion. Uh, if you're, yeah, the, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep you updated. The idea is that this comp consulting company is providing on top of the Sofa Unity, a whole development, uh, develop development offer. If you need developments, if you need technical support, they provide also technical support. That's the kind of, uh, of things that they are actually proposing. So yeah, you, you understood correctly, but it might maybe change in the coming years. Maybe, okay. maybe even less, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Fernando Dapia asks, uh, hello, Hugo, is it possible to simulate thermal processes? So, yeah, uh, if, uh, it's Fernando, you said, right? Yeah, Fernando. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, Fernando, it's uh, possible. We have, uh, what we have in SOFA um, are what is called diffusion reaction processes. So we, I think, to my, uh, to my best knowledge, there is in one private plugins uh, some codes for convection, but this one is not open. But there is open, open codes for, uh, I think it could be made open. If, if, you, if somebody asks for that, we could make open the, the convection code. But there is open source, there is for sure the diffu diffusion code that allows you to compute, you know, what is called a Laplacian, so uh, uh, the, the, the diffusion in, in time and in space uh, of, of any kind of phenomenon like temperatures. Uh, I was for some time working on cryoablation, so the computation of the, of the cold of the, of the temperature within uh, organs, and I used that kind of uh, model, so uh, diffusion models that were working pretty fine. So if you are interested, you can definitely use it. Um, uh, Sharam asked, um, hi, has any time of position-based dynamics uh, been implemented in SOFA? If not, uh, does SOFA have the potential to be used for implementation of PBD, that position-based okay. dynamics? <laughs> okay, cool. That, there is uh, only cool questions, uh, or I don't know if you are selecting them, uh, 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 no. uh, sorry, <laughs> Rodolfo, but uh, it's, uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you again for, for the question. Uh, it's, there is actually uh, uh, at least one of um, uh, one at my best knowledge. I can show you here. I'm still sharing the screen, so you should be able to see them. Uh, do I have the link? Oh, no, I don't have the link here. So PBD Sofa Framework, uh, and let's have a look for. I think it's already on GitHub. Yeah, here. This one here. So it's the implementation. It's a super dirty implementation because it's uh, the dirty of, uh, the, the implementation of uh, an intern that that did that quite quickly. So it's one implementation. So so far is perfectly fine with PBD, um, especially because the way we are actually actually solving what is called constraints in so far is very close to the to the PBD approach. So the the position based uh, uh, dynamics and and. This plugin is one implementation that we, were, we, we had some other developers that were actually interested to couple SOFA with some PBD libraries. So in any case, uh, it, the, the coupling SOFA or using SOFA with PBD would be, would be fine, definitely. Uh, great. Uh, Victor Leighton asks, uh, what about the learning curve of SOFA? Uh, yeah. Thanks for your <laughs> excellent talk uh, over. Thank, thank you, Victor, for the, for the for the question. Yeah, so that's that's actually uh, why we started to uh, first making such masterclass, or we are also making training sessions. Um, we are, and that's also why we're we are making this here online documentation. It's because indeed the learning curve of SoFi is a bit uh, is a bit stiff uh, because the way it has been designed and so on is not always super straightforward. It's efficient. But then to understand it's sometimes a bit less uh, straightforward. So I would say start by looking at the uh, documentation here, online documentation. Second, 
never hesitate to uh, take a look at the API. So there is a, it's, I would say the code documentation, which is the code documentation based on something which is called Doxygen. And there, there it is. So you can, find a, you can find a link here on the documentation as well. And otherwise, if you have still difficulties starting with SOFA, never is day to get back to us and we would find a way to, uh, to, 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 start, uh, to start together and be better understand the, the first steps of SOFA. But with what is here online, and again, the, I would say, input points that I gave earlier, like uh, starting having a look at what is finite element, the finite element method, uh, how, what, what is a solver, how to solve a linear matrix system. Then from here, I think you'll be fine for, for, for starting with SOFA. But again, that was one of the, the most important uh, take home message is this one. Never hesitate when you are facing any issue to get in touch with us. Really, never hesitate. Um, awesome. Um, I get another question. Uh, you mentioned in your introduction that there were some creative industries using SOFA. So, uh, mm -hmm. can you please go deeper uh, about that and uh, maybe some examples and applications? Uh -huh. um, so there was, uh, uh, it's, it's, it has been mainly, so first uh, there have been some, I don't know if the question was on, on, the, on the very first uh, um, points that I showed here. Da -da 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 Is that th this one here? If it was about, I would say, artistics applications or, it was, or if it was about um, uh, rather, I would say, computer graphics applications. Um, well, I think it's rather the computer graphics application uh, for, for the question. So I'll, I'll answer this part. For computer graphics, it has been mainly research work that has been done here, like, uh, like the one which was shown at the very last slide here. We had also some work of animation, like character animation. How does a person move? How does a, for uh, animation movies or stuff like that? Uh, that were done, but yeah, that's the that's the kind of uh, application that was uh, that was done. There have been several uh, SIGGRAPH papers uh, published already with SOFA, so you can, uh, you can you can access all the SOFA papers here online by application publication. And there you're gonna find so uh, all the hopla. here. Sorry, there we are. Took here all the publication with SOFA. And there again, you will be able to, to, to find all the SIGGRAPH papers uh, made with SOFA, for instance here, anatomical modeling. That was one of the papers really related to computer graphics and animation. There is several of them. You can find them all, all online. Let me know if it was not exactly the question. I mean, if I'm not answering properly the question or if I got, got this wrong, anyone, please do not hesitate to write that again. Yeah, I think that was addressed correctly. So, so okay, thank cool, you. Cool. Uh, um, another one from Amir. Uh, the question is, uh, how deep can we use SOFA using XML scripting? Yeah. Do all feathers available? So, yeah. I think that features maybe. Do all yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I got the, I got the question. Mm. So indeed, I think Amir, you understood that um, uh, using XML, is gonna bring you up to a limit, up, up to a point where you're gonna be able to define a simulation. But in terms of interaction, you'll, you will be a bit limited. Why? Because all that, you, all that you, will, you will be able to do, for instance, in this here, in this uh, lever simulation, if I restart it here, in this lever simulation, you, all that you will be able to do is to open the components in the graphical user interface, maybe change some properties here on the fly, or as I did, or as I did before, pull here on the lever, but that's it. What allows the second scripting language that I mentioned before, so it was back here, sorry there, what allows the use of Python, 
Python will allow you to add a lot more of interactivity when defining your simulation. You will be able to define, for instance, if some properties will change, when they will change. You could add new objects appearing in the scene or deleting objects in the scene. And you could even create your own components and your own physics through Python. So more and more people are moving from XML to Python for getting more and more interactivity. For defining, I would say, a static scene, it means, when I say static, sorry, when I say static, it means a scene where you will just run the scene and there will be no, interac no additional interaction than the one scheduled at the beginning, it will be fine. But as, as soon as you want to increase a lot the user interactions or some kind of evolution of your, uh, of your simulation there, it, it would be good for the design maybe to move to Python. That's what I would say. Okay. Um... Victor again asks, uh, does Sofa uses adaptive mesh in FEM? I think that's yeah. the okay. element. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, uh, it's a good point again. It, uh, it has been used in, in so th the API of Sofa does allow uh, for what's called topological changes. So it means update of the topology, refining the topology, or coarsening the topology. So it does allow, allow that. Um, the fact is that the really codes using, use, using, using this kind of topological changes in SOFA, there is very, very few. And that's something we want to work in the, in the next, I would say, in the next 12 years, so in the next, uh, in, the, in the next 12 months, sorry, in the next, uh, in the next year, to get something really up and running in SOFA for easily handling topological changes. So it works and I can, I, I could show you some, some examples of that um, on the, on the YouTube channel of SOFA, for instance, you can, you can, so, so, uh, YouTube here, SOFA, and we can find, we can find here some examples where there is topological changes uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with SOFA. I'm going to seek for, for, for the video while maybe you can read, uh, I mean, find another question if there is any, uh, Rodolfo. Uh, yeah, uh, there's another one. Uh, the question is, what kind of 3D data representation is used to describe the model, to describe the volume? What tools okay. are used for preparation? Okay. Uh, just before answering this question, this is the example I was mentioning here. It's a case where it's not refining, but it's updating the mesh. In this case, it was with quadratic tetrahedrons. And uh, the, the simulation is actually handling the fact that tetrahedrons, uh, tetrahedra are actually cut and this is updated and the physics take this into account. So this, this was just to answer uh, the, the, previous, uh, the previous question. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, uh, to, to answer the second question, uh, who, who asked the question? Uh, sorry, Rodolfo? Uh, it's in... Uh, Cyrillic. So ah, okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. So, okay, fine. Thank you. Um, so, what what we are using for for um, I would say for discretizing that was one of the points also in the in the pre presentation as support of the of the simulation. Took here for physics simulation. What we do is that we decompose one volume into sub volumes that that we call small elements. And for that, we need to create what is called meshes. Again, if we get back at the example that we had here with, a, with our lever here, you can see here the 3D mesh that we were actually using. The question is how to design, how to get those mesh and those 3D geometry into SOFA. First, we are using uh, 3D, what is called 3D modelers. So it's tools, softwares that allow to mesh in 3D. For instance, one of them that we are using a lot is called Seagull Library. It is a, a software that allows for 3D meshing. 
it, it allows to make 3D uh, heterogeneous meshes and so on. So that's uh, very, very useful for, for simulation. And then we need to load these 3D models in SOFA. And for that, we are using a component that I just showed also in the demo here. For the lever, this mesh here is loaded here in what we call in SOFA mesh loaders. If I open the component, we are loading here a .msh. So it comes from the, software's, from the software which is called GMSH. I can show you it's, uh, another free software that we like here, GMesh software. There you are. It's another tool for 3D meshing, as you can see. And in SOFA, we have some loaders that allow to import the mesh in the simulation and use these 3D information, like how many points there is, how many edges there is, how many triangles there is, how many tetrahedron, if there is tetrahedron, how many tetrahedron there is in the mesh, and to load this information inside the simulation. Here you can see the number of tetrahedron and the indices of the point for each tetrahedron. That's how it works. I think it was the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, right. Uh, well, Sharam ask, asks, uh, is the lecture recorded and do we have access to it later? Uh, I can answer this. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this master class uh, has been recorded uh, as well as all of our previous master classes. And they will be available in our YouTube channel. I'm going to send the link. To, uh, through the Zoom chat to our YouTube channel, where this and all of our previous master classes are being uh, are be uh, are going to be up uploaded. So um, Alfredo asks, uh, "Hi Hugo, thanks for your presentation. Uh, is it possible to simulate uh, weight charges in model structures?" Okay, uh, thank you, Alfredo. I'm not, I'm not sure to understand properly uh, weight charges, so it means... Uh, Is there weight forces? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so actually, so if it's, uh, I would say, you know, usual mechanical, what we call loadings, indeed, uh, there is a way, for instance, in the si simulation that we did just before, just to show you again the, the file, we had here a node describing the physics of the object lever. I'm, I'm, I'm going to remove that for the moment here. And we, had an, we, add, we just added another node for a second object, the, the object that was called particle. And this particle object, as you can notice here, we are applying something which is called constant force. This constant force, I'm going to reload the scene. I'm going to here look at the particle node. And I can show you here. I don't know if, if it's going to be enough here. Here, oh, no, it's, it's a bit, the, the scale is a bit too, too high. All right, is that better? Bit too high still. Okay, that's the kind of here. Just vert. It's a, a loading just on one point, so on one vertex. But you can also apply such a loading. So I could have applied the same loading on the lever of, on any node and in any directions, any direction. Sorry, on the lever. And you can also apply what is called pressure loadings. So like not a, a nodal force, but a force spread over a surface. And this is also possible using another component which is called surface pressure force field, which is applying a pressure over a surface of your model. That's, uh, that's it. Okay, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, Maxime asks, uh, does SOFA have the ability to set anisotropic material properties? So, not all the mechanical models are actually uh, uh, integrating anisotropy, but, uh, but uh, some of them do. And for those who do not integrate anisotropy, you can either get in touch with us and that's something we could implement together. 
uh, or if you want to implement that yourself, obviously. But I think as a first step, as the first step, it can be a bit tough. So never is there to get in touch with us. I'll tell you which code does and which code is not. So that's uh, that's something I could point you out. Great. And um, the last question, I think, is uh -huh. uh, Victor again, and he asks, uh, can Sofa handle the approximation error mechanism in FEM? models with Python scripts. Uh, can, can you say that again? The, uh, the, what kind of error? Uh, the finite element modeling uh, models uh, with Python scripts. And, and uh, you mentioned an error estimation, right? Yeah, approximation error mechanism. OK, OK. Um, so there is some solvers that, uh, that implement that kind of uh, error estimation, and there is actually uh, recently a project that restarted on this topic, which is estimating the numerical error which is done at each time step by the finite element method. Um, so on a solver standpoint, so th that would be more on the solver standpoint, on the, uh, really on the, on the finite element method, estimating the, the error which is done with regards to one, I would say, um, one resolution of mesh, that's something which is not available uh, by, by default in SOFA, because I think there, there could be actually several ways of implementing it. Uh, I, I mean, I would be curious if, um, who, who asked that? Victor, Victor right? I'm right? sorry? It was Victor asking the question, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So if Victor, you're interested, we could definitely dig that, uh, dig that point together. It would, be, uh, it, would, it would be a pleasure. And uh, also thank you for all the interesting questions that you had uh, since we already heard your name several times. Um, yeah, thank you, Hugo. Uh, that thank was uh, the last question. Uh, cool. Well, uh, thank you very much for your um, presentation and taking the time to answer all of our uh, questions. Uh, well, uh, before we finish, uh, a message just to uh, Keep tuned to our uh, Twitter and LinkedIn profiles for more information about our following activities. And we hope to see you all again. And remember that uh, this presentation, as well as all of the previous master classes, are going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel. I just sent the link to the chat. And thanks to our attendees for being here today. And thanks again to you, Hugo, for yeah. the interesting Thank class. you for the organization. Out, uh, so far. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you all.